If the waves grow, they are called unstable. If the waves decay, they are called stable. If the waves remain constant, they are called neutral. So the original Roth V wave theory is a neutral wave theory. But in the real atmosphere, you might have remembered the two peaks, the two peaks. There is one peak around four, wave number four. I also explained what's wave number. Because normally two pi by L would think be the wave number. But it has dimension. Two pi by L has L minus L dimension. L minus one. But actually, what is the wave number is two pi A cos y by L. Anyway, that's the wave number of waves. So, in the real atmosphere, the famous figure of Charney shows two peaks. One at wave number three or four, and the other at a higher wave number seven or something like that. Also, the lower wave number is very much peak, whereas the other wave number is broad. There is no clear maximum. This is these two wave numbers represent. The first one, the so-called stationary wave. The second one, unstable wave. The problem with the neutral theory is, is it not? The problem with the neutral theory is, it cannot explain the weather. Because in weather, normally weather is created by the unstable wave. Because Imagine, originally, the pressure perturbation will be very, very small. And as the pressure perturbation grows, as the wave amplitude grows, that means the kinetic energy is growing. So, <coughs> as the kinetic energy is growing, it is drawing energy from somewhere else. So, as the kinetic energy is growing, do the partial derivative of K the wave energy is d by dk is greater than zero. That is, kinetic energy is increased. Since the total energy is constant, when in the absence of sources of rain, the total energy is constant only in the absence of sources and sinks. In that case, if there are no sources, if there are no sinks, the total energy is constant. If the kinetic energy is growing, may some other energy is decreasing, or there is a transfer of energy from one form of the energy to the other form of the energy. Normally, in the middle and high latitudes, this transfer of energy is from the so called available potential energy of the perturbation. So, the so called energy cycle of Lorentz. Lorentz general cycle is called. In the case of middle and high latitudes, the Lorentz general cycle is P bar to P prime, P prime to K prime. Anyway, this uh, there is a separate subject altogether. 
I don't want to stop it. Tonight I am going back to Vishavapatana. And uh, your director instructed me that you come again after some time. But that time, he said you can stay maybe one or two months, maybe one month away. Then I give continuous classes. So there will not be a break. Since that whole realm, what to say, the realm of instability study, is, I cannot stop in between. So since today, I want to give a separate article because that I will keep for your future and you keep expecting for the future talk. So I'll come back sometime, I will give, and that was my whole life to such a talk. My PhD thesis in 1969 was about, was about the instability theory. And that is the, to my knowledge, to my knowledge, that is the central part of the modern meteorology. Modern meteorology. Originally discovered, as I was saying, by Charney, Edi, and many later on. Okay? I don't go much into the detail of that. Today, I will give a topic, a paper published already now, that second author, which is our PhD student, first and third author, he is a PhD student of myself and Professor Ashok at the University of Hyderabad. The title is, as you see, a unified view, a unified view of breaks in Indian, South and American monsoon. I don't want intentionally, I did not put the title a unified theory, then it becomes complicated. Okay. Because then it should be theory. And so, not to complicate, I have put a unified view that is different. The moment you say theory, then you have to show mathematical solutions, all those things. But anyway, still this is highly mathematical, nevertheless. So, <clears throat> in this, the idea is to give a unified view of three months old. And also, recent, for all of you, for all of you, there is a famous professor, the University of Hawaii, by name Professor Bin Wong, B A N W A N G, and uh, he proposed. He proposed. I, I also thought it's a view only, not a theory. It's a view of global monsoons. Global monsoons, and uh, you go to the Google Scholar, put. Concept of global monsoon, you will get it. And please read it. Make it very, very simple and more descriptive. There are no equations or anything. It's a unified view proposed by Professor Bin Wong. He proposed seven regions of global monsoon. <coughs> Normally, in the case of India, we know in the Arabian Sea, in the Arabian Sea, it is southwest monsoon and that is June, July, August, the core of the summer season. And December, January, February, the core of winter, it is other way around. That is what is called Nairuti Rutupona and Ishanya Rutupona. That is southwest and northeast. There is 180 degree reversal. I think you all know that. You know, is it not? So, in the case of India, the wind changes by about 180 degrees. So, the Arab sailors in Arabian Sea, they recognize that long time back, if they travel in summer, they call it boreal summer. Boreal means in Manchul matter. Like Boreal it. means northern hemisphere. Austral means southern hemisphere. <coughs> so in the Boreal summer, the wind is from south southwest. So the sailors they know. They only recognize. So first they gave the name Mausam. Arab name Mausam. That has become slowly monsoon. So actually, monsoon is recognized as 
180 degrees reversal of the wind. And unfortunately, this happens only in Indian wind. I worked 50 years in South America. There they called earlier, I wrote a paper published in the Journal of Geophysical Research. When I wrote a paper, that was about very, very early, 72, 73, like that. Then uh, one of the reviews said, crop up, cut the word monsoon. So the, the reviewer did not like the word monsoon. So he said, cut the word monsoon. So anyway, the so-called monsoon word, okay, because I want to sub-publish, I removed that word, but now there is a South American monsoon. Okay, South American monsoon, but certainly there is no wind reversal. So, wind reversal is not an indication of the monsoon. And I, in my view, probably many will agree, the summer rains, winter almost dry, could be the monsoon in the tropics. Could be the monsoon in the tropics. Okay, but you all know what's called Rugveda. You heard again something about Veda, something about the classical books. In Rugveda, the sloka is Ekam Sat Vipram Bahudavadanti. Ekam Sat Vipram Bahudavadanti means truth is only one. Sages. Vipram is not necessarily Brahmins. Vipuram means sages. Vipuram bahuda vadanti. That word bahuda, we can <coughs> bahuda means not different. Bahuda means various. For example, please pay attention. Suppose I say, this is a chair. He says, no, no, it's not chair, it's table. That is different. Okay? That is Bahuda means, I say this is a table. He says it has brown color. He says this is four chairs, four legs. It's all together. Together it describes. So, Ekam Sat Vipram Bahuda Vadanti. All together becomes various, not different. Bahuda means various, not different. So, Ekam Sat Vipram Bahuda Vadanti. The idea is, is some sort of unification. So, another view, the so-called unification theory, the Einstein himself, is it not? Remember, U equals, E equals to MC square. E equals to, I read some, some book somewhere in uh, encyclopedia. The idea of E equals to MC square is again a unification of putting mass, okay? So the whole thing, they always try to unify. Now, what many others also try to do later to join together and get the final explanation just by one particular theory. So in this paper of not that Einstein of type, simply can you give a unified view Again, I don't want to write theory. The unified view of the monsoons of South America, okay, India, and North America. So, before that, I'll give some of you have an idea about breaks in the monsoon. Soon, I have to come under the calendar. Here, wait just a little, please. You see, here in 1972, 1972, the seasonal rainfall was about 73 centimeters. What they call it? LPA. Is it not? Maybe some of you are already know. Long period average. Long period average. So, here it is that the long period average. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It is down actually. Okay. Okay. Okay, the long period average in 72 was 73 centimeters. 
whereas in 75 it is 103 centi 101 centimeters you see in the case of 1972 another classical year of difference from about 15th july to almost 15th august the rainfall that black curve is the long period average of the daily long period average you see in the middle of monsoon from about 15th july from about 15th august there are very very less rainfall so this epoch when the rainfall is very less are called break monsoon because there are breaks in the continuous monsoon rainfall. So, if there are many <coughs> breaks, you see, in 72, there is a classical low rainfall year. One in middle of July and August. And there are another, there is one in September, and like that. There are several that actually reduce the field total rainfall to 73. Where this did not happen in 75, so the rainfall is that was 101 centimeters. So now about the so called break. Why breaks are important? Because if there are many breaks, it's a calamity. Because for the whole population of India, billions, isn't it? More than one billion. They rely very much on the summer, that is our southwest monsoon season for agriculture, for drinking water, for electricity, for many life activities. So, if there is, if there is decrease of mean rainfall, if there are many breaks in the monsoon, then the rainfall will be less. Sun, the whole question is, what is to break monsoon? Is it not? Can we predict it? And if we predict how many days in advance and how efficiently we can predict, what is the skill of the prediction? And pay attention again, my particular view is however sophisticated the model is, unless you know the physics of the problem, the theory of the problem, you cannot probably predict. That what one Dole Prize winner, Professor Manabe, said, you get correct answer for wrong reasons. So the model might give the answer, but we don't know why it is giving. Is it not? So we should know the cause and effect relationship. So, what is break monsoon? How it is caused? See? And another very important thing, how it revives? How it revives? How far it revives? Is it fast or slow? Slow is the break, is it not? Low is with the mean rainfall, is it not? So, what causes the break? And what causes the revival? So these are some of the, are some of the theoretical questions. This I investigated long time back. I have a paper in Talos in 1971. I posed a theoretical problem as I was explaining the instability problem. You can solve by what is called eigenvalue problem. Remember? If you write the stream function, psi equals to psi cap e to the power of ik minus c d, where c is the phase field, if c is cr or i c i, if c i is greater than zero, then the wave grows or the amplitude grows or the kinetic energy grows or we say it is unstable. So, the stable, unstable, neutral depends on C. If C is greater than the imaginary part of the phase speed, okay? The imaginary part of the phase speed gives 
if it is positive it is unstable if it is negative it is stable if it is zero it's not that is called the eigen value problem because c becomes the eigen value of the problem what is eigen value mathematically all that please we refer maybe it is already maybe your graduate course you must have all heard eigen value is not so but pay attention there is a later paper <coughs> when one by professor farel brian farel in the real atmosphere in the real atmosphere this eigen value problem falls in the so called normal mode i told you not that particular way of expressing psi equals to psi cap e to the power of i k in x minus a is called normal mode that is what is normal mode mathematically physically shape preserving the wave preserves the shape and the shape preserving normal mode this brand for air short does us exist in nature so what you have what is the solution then he suggested what is called the initial value problem there are two type of problem mathematically one is called eigen value problem the other one is the initial value problem knowingly or knowing the way in 1968 I solved the initial value problem. At that time, I didn't know that it's implication. I just wanted something different from the normal. So I did the uh, initial value problem. And so now, how it happens in the case of the break monsoon of the Indian summer season, and what are the other futures? You all know in summer. At about latitude of the Trivandrum, there is what is called an easterly jet. You know, you all know the easterly jet. Yes, yes, sir. And uh, what is the height? Where it is? The height? Two hundred. Huh? Two hundred hectopascal and fifty. Not two hundred. Yeah, much above. 150, 125, not 200. Middle latitude, subtropical jet is at the tropopause level. Well, the tropopause of the tropics, tropopause of the middle latitude, which is higher. Tropics. Tropopause of the tropics. That is higher, 15 kilometers. At that level, it happens. 15 kilometers in this particular place. Is about 150 millivolt up to that. So there is an easterly jet because <coughs> you all know what thermal wind. Thermal wind. So in the case of normal global temperature, equatorial region is a higher temperature, polar region is a lower temperature. The temperature. Decreases from the equator to the pole. This type of temperature distribution generate through thermal wind relation a vector region that is in this upper latitude at about 30 degrees north. The maximum is at about 200 to 200 degrees at the highest tropopause because above tropopause it reverses. Pattern up to tropopause, the gradient is the equator to pole. Above tropopause is the reverse. So naturally, at the tropopause is the maximum. So that is the maximum of the westerly jet subtropical westerly. In the case of monsoon season, <laughs> in the case of the monsoon season, the temperature increases. From over the equator up to about 20 to 25 degrees north, our Indian region, or further west also, or Africa, 
this generate what is called easterly jet of the boreal summer particularly it goes on up to africa or africa also there is an easterly jet the instability of african jet generates what are called easterly winds they are the rain producers huh? they are the first indicator some of the easterly winds become the so called fatal tropical cyclone highly destructive or north atlantic ocean so easterly jet is very very important there are some classical papers there is one paper a p burger or something but some for some i forgot now but p b r p e b r p e one of the professor charney student from 1971 or something that was the first paper put to show that these easterly winds are unstable barotropical barotropical that was for those reasons in our case in our case or india the easterly jet during the break monsoon pattern during the break monsoon the easterly jet location which is at about the trivandrum latitude is about 150 millibar so i gave the latitude and the height also you can see that and then during the break this jet moves further north and the subtropical jet a little lower altitude but still there is very high wind even above that that comes southward so patterns the subtropical jet comes inevitably south and the tropical easterly jet moves inevitably north when during the break month so there is a very very strong shear okay here it is the easterly shear that is the westerly shear so the gradient is very high so one of the first papers my paper i showed it is barotropically unstable without doing to master tell paper i see here this is a telus paper in this telus paper i pose an initial problem and the initial is a very short note for those of you who want i have some of you have some of you, the people here have the entire thesis of mine a initial problem because many of the books hold them they always pose a eigen value problem why because for understanding you can see a simple normal mode to understand the dynamics and all but this brain for elsure in nature it doesn't exist but however it is very very useful to understand the dynamics that's why you say in hortel book many books but whatever it is in the case of nature it doesn't exist this particular paper 1971 tell us all the equations and all it is an analytical solution you know the difference between analytical solution and numerical solution so ball integral of sin x how much it is integral of sin x dx prime state minus cos minus cos x is it not minus cos x pay attention this is valid for all x okay this is valid for all x five t n for all now integral of sin 30 minus cos 30 is it not that is the numerical solution you understood now the difference numerical solution is this valid only for that particular number whereas analytical solution is valid for all x 
so mathematically analytical solution is superior and also play against like typically mathematically it is called elegant if the solution is analytical they say it is very elegant that the word used in mathematics so you have a differential equation if you have a differential equation is it not if you have a numerical solution numerical solution it is numbers valid only for that particular thing. on the other hand if you have analytical solution it is very elegant and applicable to several cases for the whole spectrum probably anyway normally pay attention again the navier stokes equations you know what are navier stokes equations the navier stokes equations are statements of physical law such as conservation of momentum conservation of energy conservation of water vapor is it not like that and then uh, as i was explaining in the case of professor rosby 1939 he didn't want to solve the whole what is called the navier stokes equation He said, "No, I don't want to solve. I want to solve a simple problem. So, what he did? He reduced the conservation of momentum d by d t of u plus that equation d by d t v. Two equations govern it. U is what momentum. How it is momentum for unit mass. Okay, u the zonal wind." Is momentum u momentum for unit mass v is unit momentum for p. This is a minute answer. So u that is all the equations are conservation of momentum, conservation of energy, thermodynamic equation, conservation of water vapor. Those are highly complicated non-linear equations, and for these equations there are no Analytical solutions. We have only numerical solutions. How we mean that? For example, u bracket delta t, that is u after delta t equals to u zero plus dou u by dou t into dou t plus one by two factor. That is Taylor's theorem. In this case. If I take only the linear term, if I know the initial value is zero, if I know do you what do you see, then I can extend u after some delta. That is the basis of the so-called numerical weather prediction. This type of problem, mathematically, is called <coughs> marching problem. Marching problem. That means you march left, right, left, right. Okay, march in time, in time. So it's called marching problem. What you have to do? You should know the initial value you give, know, and you have to get do you know. It's not. And also, as you obviously you know, since you truncate it, the series. Is definitely approximate. It is pattern. It is not analytical. The solution for the Navier Stokes equation, you should get only numerical solution. So they are definitely approximate. Pattern again. Since these are numerical solution. It's called the weather prediction is called numerical weather prediction, not because there are numbers, because even in synoptic weather there are numbers. This is a numerical solution of the <coughs> analytical nonlinear equation. <laughs> so we have the numerical solution, but in particular case here, there is highly approximated simple case. Is it not? I want to show 
I wanted to show at that time when the jet easily jet moves north and the vessel jet comes, all oh, the shear becomes very high. That becomes better probably unstable. Better probably unstable. I posed an initial problem. I have at that time an analytical solution for the very simple problem of the initial value case. And after some time, equals to dou k by dou t zero plus second derivative, third derivative, fourth. I have a C. And if I truncate only up to second derivative, as you see in the paper, then if I know the initial value, then I can solve the problem and calculate dou k by dou t or time variation of barotropic kinetic energy. Which is positive, it is unstable because kinetic energy goes. If it is negative, it becomes stable. If it is zero, it becomes rotable. Then I got the analytical solution. The waves greater than 2d by square root 3. All the waves with the wave length L greater than greater than 2d by square root 3. What is d? Is the meridional width of the jet. If you have the jet, is it not? If you have the jet, if D is the meridional width, meridional width, so the most unstable version is given by the meridional width. Obviously, how? If the meridional width is very large, it becomes weak shear. Okay? If the meridian width is short, is it not? Becomes very high shear. Because the shear of the wind, zonal wind, shorter the meridian scale, becomes peak, longer slow it is. So it depends very much on the so-called meridian width of the channel, of the jet channel. All those waves which are greater than, that is an analytical solution. That's how it comes like that. 2D by square root 3. This is an analytical solution. This is published in 71. I saw, I think, much later, John F. Moss, another American professor, he solved more general problems, but it is the same solution, 2D by square root 3. So I felt very happy. The same solution, which I got much before, I don't remember. I can use that different uh, The general of atmosphere is solid problem, but the solution is exactly 2D by square root 3. But in any case, so now if you know the channel width of the jet, you can get, you do not, you can get the most unstable All the waves greater than 2D by square root 3 are unstable. Are unstable. All the waves lower than 2 d by square 3 are stable. <laughs> okay? And exactly 2 d by square root 3 is not. Okay? That is the mathematical criteria. Okay? And now, please, uh, paper position matter. Yeah. So, it's a paper by our PhD students that done to Govardhan. And uh, this is published in Journal of the Atmospheric Sciences, the JAS 2017. You have an idea of Journal of Mass Sciences? One of the top journals of American Visual Society for theoretical visual. Theoretical visual. The very, very discovery, the classical chaos problem is published in this journal. 
Rawlins in 1963. Deterministic non periodic law. Very, very tough. One of your students here, that Babishek Cha, you know all of them? He published in General Form of Science. He said, he told me he took seven rounds of reading. Seven rounds. That's how it is. The Telugu saying that you all know. If it is a, he classified three types of people so the low class, middle class, upper class, of tenacity, not the manual tenacity. Those who are of the low class, those who are of the low class, they are like uh, mud. The moment they fall, you may that place. Whereas, they initially, those who are low, they don't even start anything. Having a doubt whether they can solve or not. The middle class are like, like must start once it becomes they fall. The highest class is like a tennis ball. Falls but again, right? Okay. You want to work hard like that until you got a solution. So one second, third, fourth, he patiently, tenaciously. He worked for seven reviews, but finally moment. That's what it matters. In this case also, it was very, very difficult, but still it is following. So in the, we have a unified view, you see, of the break. Next page, please. To be so So next. So these are the, now you see, not a good of all. You see, are they, are they? Yes. slow, slow, slow. So this is one case, you see, first, second, third, compare the first August 2 zone, first August 2 zone to third August 2000, and then sixth August. Is it not? You see, that white region is without rainfall. Okay? You see very clearly, there is no rainfall, or it is typically a break. Typically, break monsoon case from about 1st August by about 9th August, it has revived. Next to which are number. So, these are the 200 millibar, 200 millibar waves. Okay? One of the important efforts here is, again, wait, and there are a very important paper published in the classical nature paper. In that they suggested one uh, Raman and Rao paper, individual attitudes, you know, there are what we call unstable rock B waves. Typically, the instability being baroclic instability. Sometimes the waves penetrate to low latitude, form what is called a Blocking situation. In any case, so now you see in this case, from about 1st August, you see how the waves are penetrating. And also, probably you all know, in the case of the mean monsoon season, July, June, July, August, and September, the structure is there is a low level. Monsoon low. Okay? Is it not? That low is typically a heat low. Heat low. And with the hydrostatic approximation, D for dho phi by dho p equals to minus alpha, right? For dho p by dho p equals to minus alpha. R equals to minus 1 by rho, P equals to rho RT, and so 1 by RT is RT by P, or rho phi by rho P is proportional to temperature. So, if you have, okay, depending on, these are some of the very, very important things. If it is heat low at the surface, heat low at the surface, it is very shallow. That is, 
till draw is shallow. So that means as you go up, it is replaced at a higher level by a height. That is low till draw. If you can carefully think, put a hydrostat at the cross maximum. Rho phi by rho p equals to minus 1 by rho is equal to, e equals to minus rt by p. If you take two regions, the difference is proportional to temperature. This is not. Find the geopotential. Find the geopotential. Increases or decreases with height? Huh? G, Z, that is the geopotential height, isn't it? Z it increases. The operation continuously increases. Always increases with height. But compared to the ambient in the region of higher temperature, it rises rapidly. So compared to the ambient, if temperature is high in that column, even if it is low at the low level, because the, the, temp, the pressure rises rapidly, at a height, it becomes high. That is what is called the monsoon height. These are some of the classical features we all should know about the Indian Southwest monsoon, the heart of modern meteorology. Isn't it? Not? That's what it is the name for. So at the low, there is a huge low. At a higher height, this is what is called a Tibetan high. Because over Tibet, there is a very big high pressure cell. This situation, please better, is very similar to South America. There is a low for southern hemisphere summer, December, January, February. There is a low for South America called Shango low. It is just heat low. There is a name there. Here we have Tibetan high. There it is, Bolivian pipe. Very, very similar. That is something a unified view. So that is the title of the article. We think it is all something very common. You see, the break month, the revival is very common. That is the idea. And now, you see, these things, some of the classical things, a heat low, a low with high temperature, is shallow, whereas a high with low temperature, Siberian high, Siberia is low, temperature is very cold in winter, is it not Siberian high? Siberian high is a high with low temperature, also shallow. The surface there is high, by about 800, it doesn't exist. Very, very shallow. And the, these are things very simple to understand through hydrostatic approximation. There is a board, the board in there, to be stung with the Okay, I will explain next time. Very simple, you can get. Okay? Through the hydrostatic approximation. Again, pay attention, please. One of the approximations, like Joseph approximation, Hydrostatic approximation, beta plane approximation, they are all approximation. Means there are limits to validity. But hydrostatic approximation is one of the very, very valid approximation. Why? Because the Earth's atmosphere, okay? Compared to the Earth radius or diameter, the depth of the atmosphere is so small. <coughs> That's why Earth's atmosphere is very shallow. The depth of the atmosphere is so small compared to the diameter of the Earth. Normally, hydrostatic approximation is very, very bad. Unlike Geostrom and other approximation. Now, to which are the next? So now you see there are several cases, whereas in the case of 2000, 
in the middle, the rainfall has become almost zero. Is it not? 2000, 2002, 2004, 2004 is not that low. Okay, next year, which this is the thousand twenty bar high, the low, <coughs> the waves of the thousand twenty bar. Pay attention. I, I started saying, why wave? Because if you brought a 500 millibar chart, you see waves in that, not straight line. So it is very natural to treat these disturbances as waves. So here also we see some of these things. The classical picture, some of the, <coughs> but in this particular case, it is the break monsoon case. Okay, next. So now we see this is the zonal wind, average zonally between 23rd to 31 July during the break monsoon. You see, there are two peaks, you do not. In the middle latitudes, okay, at about 45 degrees north, there is about 20, 22 meters per second, and the secondary peak. Now, next. Now, here it is, you see, ends up to 40 degrees, 45 degrees north, 50 degrees north. Now, I will explain the theory. Can you that? Can you go a little bit? Now, you see, pay attention. Patience is still there to hear. Okay. You see, the original Rossby solution. She, okay. Any question you want? No. Huh? No. Okay. The C equals to U minus beta by K square. C equals to U minus beta by K square. It is for the Rossby solution. Now, if C is zero, it is what? Stationary wave. Okay? Stationary wave. The wave will not move. Wave will not move. Pay attention. This is important. I want you people to appreciate the physical sense of what I am saying. Is it not? So, if C is 0, U equals to beta by B square, is not. That is a free stationary wave. Because Rossby waves are free waves. If there is no C equals it, they move away. They are free stationary waves. There are, this is one quality of stationary wave. So, if C is 0, it is a stationary wave. It is called U equals to beta by K square or beta L square by 4 pi square. Beta L square by 4 pi square. So, that L, if you want to get right in your book, L you can call it LS stationary. Okay? U equals to 4 L square by <coughs> B, you know, C equal to U minus beta by K square or C equal to U minus hmm, U minus beta L square by 4 square. Isn't it? Now, U equals to, I don't know, but tell me that what U equals to write in the paper and tell me. Huh? So higher the U, higher will be the LS. Is it not? The stationary <coughs> wave length. The stationary wave length. Depends on U, because L is the wavelength. So these are, pay attention, free stationary wave. 
There's a, another quality of this, as I was explaining, they are called forced stationary. Forced by what? Mountain and stationary heat sources. Stationary heat sources and stations. This is just what we explained the other day. So, there are two types of stationary waves, free stationary waves and forced stationary waves. And now, when the wavelength becomes equal, what happens? There is one wave, free. There is a force thing. There will be the So then, when the free wave and the force wave becomes equal, this is one theory developed Germans by one man called Korn Huber. Kai Korn Huber. That is the name of the person. He explained some of the extreme events. Earlier, there were Pakistan floods. 2012 or something. Severe Pakistan, severe heat waves in Russia. And he suggested the occurrence of these events like Pakistan, but heat waves in Russia, Europe, they are all manifestation of the amplified wave. Amplified how? By quasi-resonant amplification. By quasi-resonant amplification. Now, C equals to U, U naught, minus beta L square by 4 pi square. U naught. So, C and C is 0. U equals to beta L square by 4 pi square. Higher the U, Higher alias, is it not? So, so alias, the stationary free of the wave, length will depends on the value of the journal V. Value of the journal V. Okay? And the corresponding, these are free stationary waves. They are corresponding force stationary wave, force by topography, force by <coughs> heat source. Again, there is a classical, very, very important theory by Charney and it's there in the paper, you cannot download it free. Anyway, another again, Charney, all innovations are mostly by here. So he suggested this quasi resonant amplification. And we found, so in this case here, that the 2000 drought, you see, at 40 degrees north, 45 degrees north, 50 degrees north, you see, the, depending on the sign, the wave number 5 and wave number 7. They have increased a lot during the break. During the break. So, That's compared right. the red is the climatology. Red is the climatology. Compared to the climatology, at these three latitudes, three latitudes, you see how high that becomes? The amplitude. It is something like resonance. So it is quasi resonant amplitude. Okay? This can create a drought over India. I break. How? 
were creating a high pressure at a higher level, which forces downward motion, creates sinking, lack of rain. Or, as told me, next to which are number. So these are some of the cases. You see the high pressure. So what we suggested in this paper is published. I can show you. You also can see. <coughs> Janat Ma says 2007, 2022, theoretical and operational knowledge. And in this case, you see, okay, pay attention. Normally in the mean, there is a Tibetan high, okay, and corresponding low. During the break mark, all, this high becomes relatively weaker. Relatively weaker. Once the high is weaker, there is convergence, sinking, okay, and relatively higher pressure. So it induces sinking or lack of rainfall leading to drought or the brick man hole. That is the idea. Okay? Next to which one So another, again another theory. The <coughs> all must have heard areas in conflict. Another very, 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 as I was explained to you the other day, Remember newspaper and both data? That's right. So, you have to read and throw. And there are some papers you have to repeatedly read, like Parayana. This is another paper, Elias and Palm, 1962, in a remote journal of Norway, Geophysical Publication. I think that's how we spell. There is a Norwegian journal, 61, 62, it was almost very, very important. What they achieved in this field, pay attention. Till then, some of the classical properties of baroclinic engine is to transfer heat and momentum. And so far at that time, People treated heat and momentum as to separate physical property. For the first time in 1961, Eliasson and Palm, this aren't Eliasson, the same person, I don't know whether he alive or died, I don't know. And uh, this aren't Eliasson, the same person who invented pressure point. Okay, a little x, y, z. He invented what's called the P coordinate. What is the advantage? What is the advantage of P coordinate? Huh? There are several coordinates in meteorology. X, y, z, x, y, p, theta coordinate, p by p, a sigma coordinate. They are for all specific purposes. So, P coordinate, what is the advantage? Anybody can apply? What is the problem with Z? Huh? P is more stratified in the vertical. No, no. <laughs> so. You write the equation of continuity in the Z coordinate. You can write Z coordinate equation of continuity. Huh? Exactly. You see, in the Z coordinate, this 1 by rho, d rho by dt, equals d by d, d by d by d. W by dz. That is the z coordinate. Very, very complicated. In the p coordinate, how is it? du by dy. du by dy. du by dy equals to 0. So simple. This is one of the very, very useful mainly for the 
but you give it a continuity equation. What is the continuity equation? What physical life generates? Huh? It? It's continuity of the mass. Okay? Continuity of the mass. And uh, thermodynamic equation? What physical law? Second law of thermodynamic conservation of energy. Okay? UV? Huh? Where is momentum? Where is momentum? U is what? Momentum for unit mass. Okay, U is momentum for unit mass. V is momentum for unit mass again. So their equation finally or thereafter on Navier's Stokes equation. Every equation is the statement of a physical law. You know what? And in the case of P coordinate. The continuity question is very, very simple to define. And the theta coordinate, you know, what is the level? What is the advantage? Entropy remains constant. Huh? Entropy constant. Tax stability. Entropy. Entropy is constant. Where we see it? You said the continuity becomes so small, so simple. Where is the simplicity? Okay, entropy. Not constant, if there is a latent zero constant, it doesn't be constant. So, even if it is, the idea is theta coordinate. These are some of the very, very important and interview questions for jobs later on. In the indication of theta coordinate, The theta is conserved. You know what? So, the thermodynamic equation becomes simple. <coughs> In the case of P coordinate, the equation of continuity becomes simple. Okay? And sigma, sigma is what? Anybody? Numerical other prediction. Sigma. What is sigma? P by PL. But what is the advantage? Uh, Why do you have to do that? Uh, it results uh, to, for the better representation of orography. Topography. Is it? In the case of orography, if there is a mountain, it becomes very complicated. Whether it is J or P, whereas theta 1 follows the topography. So, D theta 1 by 0 or theta star D theta by D T is identically 0. Is identically 0. So it has W 0, no, it's not valid. Okay? So D theta D sigma D sigma by D T total derivative is identically 0. Because 1 is always that is the advantage. And you know who invented this? Who invented the pressure coordinate? That professor? R and D, yes. P coordinate. And uh, sigma? Well, one professor, Norman Philip, an MIT professor. I think he has maximum to 10 or 12 papers that we are. Everyone one is a classical paper. And again, there is another Bhagavad Gita by him. Please note, this is very, very important. Geostrophic motion. The title of the paper is Geostrophic Motion, N. A. Phillips, 1963, Reviews of Geostrophic Read once, read twice, read thrice. Go on reading. Okay, what do I read? Excellent paper. They are like this, very, very few. These days, there are, I know many people who have 200, 300 papers. But so these are some of these papers. He is the first man to simulate general circulation. That was his PhD thesis. 
you square it by two, we do square for second square. Tan theta. So meter square for second square is units of energy. So V phi millionaire transport of energy. W phi vertical transport of energy. And those vectors there represent the transport of energy by Eliasson form vector. And now another complicated word. <coughs> and these vectors represent <coughs> what's called Rossby wave radiation. Rossby wave radiation means if there is a source at the surface, it forces the Rossby wave. And these Rossby waves propagate, is it not, in the vertical and mirror, vertical and mirror, and the energy gives the Rossby wave radiation. But why radiation? The sun gives the radiation. That radiation is not energy. Is it not? So this is called Rossby wave. Radiation because phi has meter square per second square energy. V phi is millionaire transport of energy. W phi is vertical transport of energy. Or the vector gives the transport of Rossby wave energy. That is the Eliasson form vector. Another 1961. And there is the original Eliasson form. They derive these equations for gravity waves, not for Rossby waves. There is another classical paper, again by Charney. Charney and Drazen, 1962, Journal of Geophysical Research. So, Charney and Drazen extended this theory for Rossby waves instead of gravity waves. One of the, okay, this is very fascinating. Hear me, I'll stop about that. Just another five minutes, please. Okay, in the case of sun, then there is eclipse, complete eclipse. Or you can artificially also make the sun disk dark. Then you see what are called, what is called that? Solar corona. Solar corona. In the case of solar corona, the energy leaks from the sun surface several diameters. Solar damage, you see big corona, corona like that. Then, Professor Charney asked, why there is no corona? There is solar corona, we all know. Why there is no corona? See, fascinating. In the case of sun, energy leaks. In the case of earth, energy does not leak. That means energy is trapped in the lower atmosphere. Why it is trapped in the lower atmosphere is the Charney region, 1961. And normally it is trapped, but on certain occasions, lot of energy goes up and generates what are called stratospheric sudden warmth. You all know stratospheric sudden warmth. So stratospheric sudden warmth are more an exception than the rule. The charted region classical paper is the paper where the stop energy is trapped, confined in the lower atmosphere. But there are certain occasions, normally, 
for everything rule, there is an exception. This is one exception. There is sometimes energy leaves into the stratosphere and generates what are called stratospheric models. Okay, we'll stop at this. Any questions or doubts or anything? For Indian case, uh, you told that the break is around something like 10 days or something. Huh? What about uh, the break period you have shown? Oh. So what about in that uh, uh, in South South America? Yeah, they, are, they are also there. Same like 20 days something. 10 to 20 days. The idea of the unification, not the number, similarity yeah, of the theory. Yeah, yeah, something very similar. Another question is that you told that, that uh, the channel width of the, 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 the two jets, easterly and uh, westerly jets. So you told that this is at 150 and that is at 200. That's not a matter. Yeah, but that is, that is 150, but almost from this whole depth, you can see that. Almost yeah. How much it could be in, huh? in a number of ways? That channel width. Normally, the normal case. The most unstable way is greater than 10,000 kilometers. If they don't come near, when they come near, they become six, five, like that, within the range. And that tallies with observations. And normally, after the is coming closer, a low form for head bit. That is the disturbance by instability. And the now it will pu push up the monsoon again, becomes normal monsoon again. That is the sequence. Uh, this is a, as far as a, the latitude and longitude by the, you are well, telling that longitude. there is a lot of shear. So what about the vertical shear? Because there is a low level jet and there is a tropical easterly jet in India. Uh -huh. So that doesn't make any sense in this way. Normally, during the monsoon, the latitude is so low, F low, beta is higher low during the low latitude, during the low latitude. Beta, high, huh? high. very high beta. It prevents the birth of instability. Higher the beta, lower the instability. Near the equator, there is no instability. So beta should be low or F should be high. There are some of the theoretical questions here. Yeah. You have to solve your derivative and understand. So, you do parana of that classical Joseph Kumar. Very, very important. Very important. 